God. Jesus will walk, Jesus will carry us through. Amen. Whatever we may go through, He's our friend who is always standing close to us. Who is, to be fact, to be frank, the truth is He's the one who dwells in us. Amen. So He will see us through every situation. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Simple as that. Don't look at the things that happen around. Don't look at, listen to people. They've got hundred different views. People, the so-called, the wise of the world will say, but God's ways are different. God's ways are good. When you see things, including God in the equation, you will see things with the possibility of a miracle of God. Amen. So listen to this song. When troubles come your way And you feel all alone Just never, never give up my 
Satisfy my life. Nothing but your love. Who can satisfy my heart? No one but you. Walk inside his mind. Nothing but your love. Who can satisfy?
Praise the Lord. You know, our God is a wonderful God. He has spoken so many things in the Bible for our good and for our guidance. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, this morning, I'm here to encourage you from the word of God that God's plans are so huge. God's plans are so huge. That's why he says, what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Such great and mighty things I've got in store for them that who love me. But the problem is the limitation is not from God. The limitation is from our side. Are you with me? The limitation is from our side. And we are not so quick to see many great things happen in our life. Because even in the Bible you see when people came from Egypt, God was ready to do so many things. But the people were not cooperating. People's faith was and their belief system was not in line with God. If you and I could be in line with God, then only blessings will come. Prosperity will come. Growth will come. Because the agreement is so important. You know, in one place in the Bible it says, if two people don't agree together, how can they walk together? Only if you and God agree or in united mindset, same thing happens even in families, in friendship, in business. There's a unity. There's a unity. So that's why the Lord has given us the Bible. So that when we fill our hearts with this word, we will become God-minded. We will become life-minded. Life, life. We become the mind of God comes into us. And easy for us because we will understand the will of God. We will be in the will of God. Our thinking will be in alignment with the will of God. Then God says, whatever you pray, I will listen to it. Whatever you pray, God's ready to do it. Because you will be asking it according to the will of God. So my friend, there is so much to feed into us so that our system will be in alignment with God. When we are in alignment with God, when we are united, when we are connected to the head, then the plans of God and the blessings of God flows. But if it's not happening, it's not his mistake. We only need to recalibrate and check our life, the way we think, we expect. Our thinking is very important. Our expectation is very important. I've already preached here a few times. In those things also, in my preaching, I would have told you about how expectations are very important for God to come and work. Because you see, even the guy who was sitting there for so many years in the pool of Bethesda for a healing. God is asking, Jesus is coming to me asking, the one question he asked is, do you wish to be healed? Come on, what a question this can be. I am sitting here only for that. Yes, you can be sitting here and still got used to your poor condition and be happy to live like that for the rest of your life. But are you able to look beyond, outside those box for a greater future? God is expecting to see an expectation in our heart so that he can work through us. So that's the reason why we need to always think one thing, my friend. The Bible is not simply talking some words. No, it's very serious. He says, when you meditate on his word day and night, it will make you great success, not only success. Whatever you do will prosper. Why? We think it's a religious exercise of praying or reading the Bible. No, when you read the Bible and constantly spend time I tell you, your mind is transformed. Your word of God is going to be imprinted into your mind, into your heart. You are not going to be the same. You'll be a different person. And today I want to ask you, how serious are you with your Christian walk? How serious are you telling God, I have one life. And one life, whatever you promised it, I want to see. There are many things he's promised. He's promised divine health. He's promised prosperity. He's promised many things. But today I want to share with you what is the covenant. You know, there is a covenant that God has made with, the, with us. It's a covenant blessing. In that covenant blessing, you will see God has planned something for us. That is, He wants you and I and all of us to increase. That's all. Today's message is about how God wants you to increase. God wants you to increase. You no, know, we can be with a mindset that is enough 
and uh, God will do it, that's all. No, but God wants you to cooperate. I am me to cooperate. God wants me, my mind and your mind to change and expect, a catch a vision and then get into an increased mindset. Then you will see the blessings of God. So the first thing you need to know, I need to do is, we need to develop a vision for increase. Why? Because God has made it that way. So I will show to you, if you turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1, verse 28. When Adam was created, what was the first thing that he told? God spoke to Adam and Eve, I'm sure. What was it that he spoke? Somebody read for me. Somebody can put it on the screen also. So everybody can see. Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them. Okay. And God said unto them, Be, everybody read, Be, one, fruitful, then multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue, and have dominion. What are the five things? Number one, fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and dominion, have dominion. Now look at me. When I tell this, don't take this out of context and try to twist things according to you know, your, your, your own desires. You will see here, God never spoke on obedience. God was not talking about be meek, be humble, uh, be holy. Now, that doesn't mean those things are not important. No, no, no. Very important, all those things. But one thing at a time. What is God trying to say? Tell me. Be fruitful. Tell me. Multiply. Now, this is talking about increase. What is he talking about? You must speak loudly. Ah, because I can't hear from there, no, you're one mile distance, just imagine and scream, okay. So what does God say now from this whole thing, what do you gather? It's a topic about increase. What did God speak to Abe, uh, Adam? You, Adam and Eve, you guys need to multiply and you need to be fruitful. You need to increase, replenish the earth. So in the mind of God, what is God's mind is increase. Increase and expansion is not man's invention. Increase is God's command. God wants us to increase. As a church, what do you think God wants you to do? Tell me. You say, tell me loudly. As a church, you look around, please, and say, all these chairs will have people come. And we are going to contribute. We must have a burden. We must have not so selfish. I come, I go, who cares? No. You have a mindset now of increase. Everybody, from the leaders to everybody, you must have a mindset. God wants us to have a mindset of increase in your family, in your finance, in your usefulness, in all those things. If you don't have a mindset of increase, you will not be a successful, happy person in this one life. Otherwise, you can end up being mediocre. How many of us want to be just a mediocre or you want to be superb? You want to shine in your life. You want to live a fulfilling life. You want to have a fruitful life. You want to have a successful life. Tell me, how many of us? Yes, thank you. I see one hand up there. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to do that, if you say, stay quietly and happily, nothing is going to happen. You've already seen it for so many years. Some of you are 40, some are 30, 50, I don't know. All these years you've seen it. And if it's not worked, you must wake up. You must wake up to say, I'm not doing something. Something is wrong. God is okay, but something is wrong with me. What is it, Lord, that I need to do? If I keep on just trying to be like this, even after 100 years, you'll still be the same. That has happened to many people. Many people, many people, I'll tell you. Out of 100 people, 95 people have lived that way. Only five people have come out to do differently and their life has been successful and blessed. So you and I, we don't want to be a part of that 95%. 
but we want to be a part of that 5% of great people who have been a blessing. And I want to tell you the secret is God has said, no, He has given to us. And if you would look into this verse, you will really understand it. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, what does it say? Verse 2. 1 and 2. Can somebody read or I'll read? Okay. Uh, God said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Okay, God said you leave your uh, comfort zone and uh, your idolatry production factory was there. So you leave there and now I'm going to do what? Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. That means God takes one person and makes a nation out of him. Are you with me? One will become a nation that is increased or not. <laughs> one will become ten is also increased, but he is telling I will make you a nation. So God is interested in increasing and he, his idea is to increase and to lift us up to this great level, no? So he's going to make one man and increase to make a nation out of them. So God is definitely talking about what? Tell me. Increase. Thank you for that. So I will, God says, I will bless him. I will do all those things. If you read a uh, 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 verse, you will see in Amplified Version, a uh, beautiful verse. Uh, that is Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 in Amplified. I'll read it. And I will make of you a great nation. I'll bless you with abundant increase of favors. When God says, I'll bless you, what does that mean? Abundant increase of favors. Favors means God will favor you. You wouldn't know how things are going to happen in your life. Blessings, doors of opportunity. You know, the way finance will come. All those things God has done in the Bible is doing in our life. But you and I must come to that mindset. And that's what he says, no? <coughs> abundant increase. With abundant increase of favors and make your name famous. Make your name what? Famous and distinguished. Your name will be set apart. You will become unique. You will you'll stand up for your some speciality, distinguished. And you will be a blessing. That means in bracket it says, dispensing good to others. What does it say? Dispensing good to others. Now I'm reading from where? Amplified version. I don't know if, I, if my stall has got that Bible. You can order it to them. Buy. You must. Otherwise, at least in your mobile phone, you can download, you can pay some money, get a copy of that Amplified. A uh, few Bibles are very good. No? As you read, you will understand the Message Bible, the Passion Translation. All these things will help us. See how beautifully this verse says. When God says, I'm going to bless favor with, uh, what does he say? Increase, an abundant increase of favors. So this is how God wants to bless and do all these things into our life. So... Now, the second thing that I want to share with you is, uh, you, if he wants to increase abundant favors, uh, it is not a bad thing, you know, uh, that to, to have all the increase. Because in our mind, increase is sometimes people equated to selfishness or greediness or something which is not godly. But this increasing is God's idea. So you, you look into your life and say, God, increase me. How do I increase? How do I increase? How do I move forward? So this is God's interest for us to increase, expand. You will, if, you, if you read the Jabez prayer, no? you know about Jabez in the Bible, Jabez asking the Lord. He says, expand my borders, add no harm and problem to me. You bless me, Lord. And he's asking us to increase, increase expand my territory bless me so my friend if we don't ask how will god bless us in james chapter you see he says you receive not because you ask not and so you ask god by asking god you simply cannot ask unless you get a mindset that first of all you must get a desire i must increase 
I must increase. Now you don't ask how, how can God, that's God will help you, God will do, God will give you wisdom. But the first thing is, first thing is, I, am I ready, am I desiring to increase? You know, many times uh, we, we limit ourselves telling, uh, no, 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 uh, no, let me not. Uh, if, you, if you have one car and if you get two more cars, now people think you are greedy. See, that's none of your problem. No, God is ready to give. God is ready to increase your borders. God is ready to expand. And uh, why does God want you to increase? Ah, that is very important. So when you learn about that, then you will not hesitate. You know why? Because many people don't know. They, they think it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Because God wants to, you to multiply, multiply, and to develop an increased mindset. So when you learn all these things, uh, you will now catch a vision. What is the vision? Why should I increase? Is the question. So is the priority. The priority, it's not about me going and boasting, bragging to people that I'm blessed and all those things. But if you see, getting the priority right, it, you must get your priority right. And the priority, the reason for increase, is not just for you, not for boasting or to consume it on yourself, uh, but you know, you will have a desire to be a blessing. Number one, when you are blessed, it's going to make you attractive. Attractive not for yourself, but people want to know what is the secret, how did it all happen. Then you will point them to the God of increase, the God of the covenant of increase, how God has blessed us. So that's how God's glory will come now. When people see the blessing, the increase, the success, and then you point them to the secret. And we are not greedy to hide it, but we share with them. This is how I was. God picked me from a miry clay. God put me on a rock to stay. This is how God did in my life. Now what has happened is, it becomes very evident. It becomes very evident. No, you, sometimes people will say, even people who don't know God are so blessed. Yes, let them be blessed. Let us not think. See, sometimes we think the wicked must be suffering. No, no, why you think like, let them wicked be also happy, no? Let them deal with God, no? Why you are getting bad ideas about them? No, no, that's not our heart. Our heart should not tell, no, let the wicked all perish. So what is going to happen to us? Let them be what they are. Let them connect with God. Let God judge. Let them be happy. Let their children be happy. Let them all be happy, no? Let us not have a negative mindset towards anybody. That's none of our business. Are you with me? Yes or no? See, even in Nineveh, God was very, 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 very uh, caring for those people. You must understand the heart of God. Only the prophet was twisted. He wanted them to suffer because he told, no, now he will get a name. His priority was not right. This was personally he wants to boast. But God says, you don't know how important those people are. They may be wicked, but they are wicked, but they are my children. And he gave him a plant and the plant was giving a shade and then it withered. Then he was cursing. Then the Lord's telling, you are so upset with that one little plant. How much more I care for so many people, no? So when people are interceding, no? We care and we pray. So this is, I'm not going out of the topic. What I'm sharing is we should not uh, uh, always be bothered about God punishing the wicked. Sometimes unnecessarily we think that's none of our business. But instead put all the energy that I must prosper, I must grow, I must be successful. Why? 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 Because God is behind that. It's not my own thought. It's God's idea that I must multiply. And it's not for my personal consuming, eating, me, my family, me, no. But it is thinking towards his kingdom. We are thinking about kingdom. The kingdom is, you know, we can be a blessing, we can help to further the kingdom of God. Are you with me? You know, we are, we are kingdom people. We start to think kingdom-minded. If God is going to bless me, I'm going to bless. I'm going to bless. And you must learn, spend time to learn about sowing. You must learn about increase. You must see how God blesses us. For Christians, you must know that our only, only way is not buying and selling. Selling and buying. Buying and selling. 
No, but God's way of doing is sowing and then reaping a big harvest. So it, the, the, the tendency of blessing is through sowing and reaping. So you must learn what is sowing, how to sow. It is not only... <coughs> it is not only our uh, uh, tithes coming to church, giving our tithes. No, it's beyond our tithes offering the first fruits and alms giving. I don't know if I've spoken about that. You know, giving alms is... Uh, you give 100 rupees to someone as alms, then you're lending to God and that money will come back to you. 100 will go and 100 will come. But when you sow, the Bible says you will reap in 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. So the, the, the multiplication is in sowing. It's not only on tithes and the first fruits and the arms, but you look for opportunities and uh, your heart is thinking, how can I bless? When you, when you know there are families in need, you know some people are in need. When you know there's a need in the ministry and generously when you sow, with your mind telling not simply because these people are asking, I'm giving not. Sometimes it comes like that, but we have to tell ourselves, no, I'm going to do it with purpose. And I'm going to say, God, this is an opportunity for me to sow. I'm going to sow, sacrificially sow into this. If the pastor is telling, we have a project, we want to do this. Now, what is your idea is, Lord, this is God's kingdom. Now, this is an opportunity for me to sow. If I sow, God is going to help me to reap 30, 60, 100 fold, no. So that is an opportunity. That's how when you see there is somebody in need and a poor girl or somebody unable to, struggling to pay the fees, then you think, we, I have little money, why not? At least let's give them, bless them. This is an opportunity for me to sow. And I tell you, when I sow for the little girl or a little boy, those blessings will come to my children also. So I'm going to be smart no, about sowing. I will sow and I will reap a great harvest. So people who have done like that, they have been blessed. If you go into the YouTube, you see how the Jews, the secret for the Jews' success and riches. You go and scroll and see. There one guy is telling how the rabbi will come. The rabbi will come to his office and he's, he's got a company and he'll say they have a particular name uh, in the Jewish language for charity. The money is charity. That money is going to be allocated to give to people who will not have anything in their life other than only when God will bless them. So God wants to give those people. They can be widows, they can be orphans. We don't know whatever the need is. So such people must be blessed. So the rabbi collects. The rabbi means the pastor. Uh, the, their synagogue pastor will come and uh, and the people, you know how he says, no? he'll say this year for towards this charity, I want you to, to give $18,000. Huh? 18000 The guy gets a shock, but he cannot refuse to the rabbi. So he says, uh, very sad, but he says, okay, okay, okay. And uh, he somehow says, by the end of the year or whatever it is, he saw the blessings of God. The next year, the rabbi came. The next year, rabbi came to collect the money for charity. And he says, this year, uh, he thought he can give 18. Now he's grown up so financially. He says, this year, I want you to double it up. Huh? Double? Double means 18 plus 18. What? With fear, he said, okay. And he says, then, that year, he got, he was able to even give five times more. And like that, and they say, our whole community secret is that. Because we allocate a lot of money towards the charity, uh, give to the rabbi and they bless. So my friend, when the people are openly telling the world, we have become rich and we have become blessed because of the sowing, of sowing in the right way. In your life, no, we have a mindset, very, very crippled mindset of uh, uh, crying and uh, we don't have money, we don't have this, no. You have to break that, you have to break that. It's not only when you come get money, you will give, no. Before that, he commits and the money comes more, five times more it comes. So this is the God who blesses, he sees your heart. He sees, if I'm going to bless you, what are you going to do? But even before the blessing, when you say, God, I'm going to this year, somehow I want to allocate, I'm going to bless so much. God will see to it, it will come. Even in my life, I've seen that. I have never went on deficit. We've only been able to bless people. And I tell you, God is a God who is a rich God. God is a God who is mindful of blessing. And He's made 
provision for you to increase. So when you give, God is going to increase. You see how Abraham became a father of the nation when he didn't even have a child. Think about it. What is an increase? Took one man and made him a nation. But in the process, he almost so is one and only son. The Lord tested him. No? He said, come and offer your son on the sacrifice altar. He did that. To that level, he proved. It's almost a done deal. It's just few inches from getting it done. That's all. When he came close, the Lord said, stop it. I now know your heart. I will bless you. Now, if God tests your heart and sees, what is your heart? Everybody wants blessing. Tell me who doesn't want. But are you able to do certain things in, in alignment with God's demands? And God is teaching us the whole thing the Bible says, no, as long as the world will exit, there will be seed time and harvest. The Bible says there will be seed time and harvest. That's how the world will function. And in that only he says, what you sow, you will reap. The worldly people also know that saying. So as long as the world is going to exist, there will be seed time and harvest. So there is a time of sowing and then there will be a time of harvest. But many people sow wrong seeds. And that's why after some time they reap all bad things in their life. But if you are mindful of sowing good stuff, your life will never be the same. It will be a blessing. But before that sowing, I'm telling you, you need to reprogram, spend time with the Word of God. I tell you, that is a very hard thing. I am trying to do, I am doing it. I'm trying to and doing it, but you know, to study the Bible is not like studying some two lines and you remember it. You study and you still can't remember it. You still study the same message and still it's not even attaching. Some people listen to one message 18 times before it gets into that. Just imagine the effort. What effort have we put? No, we don't put any effort. Simply listen like that and go. Nothing goes into our mind. Just like the field, no. The seed goes and the birds take and go away. But if you would put your heart and soul into that, listen to one message that you like again and again. Read the chapter and again and again. Read the chapter John 14. John 15, John 16. You read it and try to tell me it's very difficult. You need to read it again and again and again till you grasp. Every time you read, you seem to notice something that you never noticed before. So I'm telling you, this takes a lot of effort, a discipline, and uh, a, what shall I say, a, a, an aggressive spirit. The kingdom of God suffers violence, permits violence, Violence is aggression. The aggressive people take it by force. So if you are aggressive to depend on God's word and spend time, allow the word to dwell in you richly, then you will bear fruit in your life. If the word of God comes and dwells inside you, the word of God is, is almost equal to God. You know that? We don't know. We think word of God is some book. In the beginning, what does it say in John's gospel chapter 1? Verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word was, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So in, if the word dwells in us richly, then there's something of God. And the word, when it gets filled up, God increases. When I say God increases, your faith increases. Your faith is nothing but it's, it's, it's a God's presence. Faith is not simply a positive mindset. Faith grows. How does the faith grow? By hearing, hearing of the word of God. When you keep listening to the word of God again and again, then your faith. So faith is not just a knowledge. It's a divinity. Is something to do with divine. So those things don't happen just like that. Unless you put your effort and the word becomes flesh, becomes a part of you, then God indwells in you. You become a different person. If, if you would read uh, with me to second chapter, second book of Peter, chapter 1, verse 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 you can read. It says divine promises. 
precious promises it's through the precious promises you become partakers of the divine nature do you know that this you read it because of the precious promises of god what are precious promises precious promises are nothing but the word of god this word of god has the life of god and that comes inside that and through that you take part in the nature of god partakers of the nature of god have you found that english chapter second peter chapter 1 verse 4 huh? i read brother there by given unto us exceeding great and precious promises the word of god huh? that by these huh, you might be partakers divine nature you can stop that you can read later this divine nature when we partake only brings healing it brings healing it brings blessing into us and i tell you my friend if you would take this serious and study our life will see great blessings happen <coughs> if you will and uh, the priority i said no when the increase and in blessings comes we we can finish the work that jesus has begun on the earth jesus began on the earth during his life on this earth and when he was about to be taken he said go ye into all the world and preach teach to all creation and i will be with you so when god has told those things what is our mindset that we are going to finish the work that jesus has begun and if you would uh, get that sort of a heart into your life it will take the increase of god to help you to finish god's work on the earth my friend catch a vision don't be just self centered this thinking about your own little needs about all those things these are things very very simple matter your children study your children's growth you know i have i am living trusting the lord now people all mock when we say living by faith they think you are a beggar you are a beggar depending on giving from other people why should you okay that is what so many people feel but when i came to the lord and i read the bible i never went to any bible college i just believed the word simple as that and i came to be his servant in my mind i became an errand boy i want to become jesus servant she says do this do that and jesus will feed me you know it has been so many years gone till now i have don't draw a salary from our ministry i don't demand but what has happened is god is blessing sometimes i put all my money into the ministry to meet the needs happily i'm saying only pride and boasting is for jesus so that you will know that god is able to bless us Amen. God is able to provide. God is able to take care of us. God's way of blessing is so much. So what what I found is when we serve the Lord, the Lord will build us. Lord will provide for us. He has never let us down. I have been through fearful moments. Huh. You may ask me, yes, family, children, my daughter's marriage, so many things. but i only thank god and see the joy in my life because god comes and works uh, he is a god who works behind the scenes he is the god who goes before us and works on our behalf he is the god who builds our life and only the secret is if you would wait on god if you would take time to dwell on the word if you would start listening to godly messages i pay money to listen to godly messages i'm telling you free message on the youtube is also good but sometimes when you do a study of something it will take 15 messages lessons then you pay an amount of money 
and then you learn, you become a student of the word, you become a student to study. There are many people doing such teaching, but you can make an effort to learn it even from your house, on, online, good, good stuff. You can ask your pastor, he will help you, guide you, but make an effort, just not so much, just take one subject and study. Your life will grow, fruitfulness, increase, all these things. So my friend, now number two, God wants you to develop a vision. First, so that vision, that's why the Lord said, come out, and he said, count the stars, Abraham. And he says, to see the sand, and when you take the sand, this will be like so much, you can't count your descendants. Then he says, walk the length and breadth you will possess. All these things, what he is doing is to create a vision on the inside. My friend, unless the vision on the inside is created, the manifestation on the outside will not happen. Can I repeat again? Unless a vision on the inside is built, the manifestation to happen outside will not. So first thing is the Lord says, come and see the stars. When you see the stars, they are all your grandchildren. Now count the sand, all the sand or nothing but your seed. So you start to see the sand as the seed, you start to see the stars as your descendants, and then you catch a vision for you to walk and say, I, I'm walking and God told me to give this, this place an action is doing because when you do that, there's something happens on the inside. But when you don't do anything at all, you'll just listen and go away, listen and go away. So God wants us to know, he wants to have a permanent vision on the inside. You go and our God will bless you. And uh, you will see in Deuteronomy 8, 18, it's a beautiful verse. In that beautiful verse, what does the Lord say? For thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It is he that giveth you power to get wealth. Don't be thinking hundred different things. Be single-minded. God gives me power to get wealth. God gives me power. Blessings means God empowers you to become wealthy. God empowers you to expand. God empowers you to stand out, distinguished. So this is, means these are things, the blessings of God. So my friend, this vision when you catch, it changes what you see on the inside. And uh, your life is going to be set for a great blessings that is going to come into your life. So I'm asking you, what is your mind? Is your mind always worried? Is your mind is always thinking small? I don't have a great job. My wife is not working. Both of us not enough. What to do? We, we have a lot of children, so my expenses are more. If this is the mindset, this is not a good mindset. Your mindset must say, God, you know how to increase me. You will speak on my behalf. You will expand my borders. Learn to pray Jabez prayer. That is not, it's not like a magic show. Get that heart of a Jabez who was told you are a pain. He says, no, I'm not going to be a pain. God, God, you bless me, he prayed. You bless me and expand my territory, Lord. You don't add, Lord, see to it, Lord, protect from harm and danger and sadness. So you talk to God. We have to talk to God and we have to make our minds prosperous. Even though when you have restricted money, you must be lavish to give. Not to give to me, I'm not asking, no. Please, some people say that preacher will tell you to give. I'm not that, I'm here to teach you so that you will expand. You will know whom to give, you will know where to give. That's none of my business. But your fact is, you make up your mind that you will give even until it hurts. David said, I will not give anything that... Tell me, do you know that Bible verse? When he was in a position to build an altar for God, 
he said i want to buy that property the owner of that place says why king you ask me i give it free for you a normal man would say praise the lord god has done a great miracle for me no he says i will not give to god that which costs me nothing i will not give to god that which costs me nothing please don't think of getting rid of all the broken useless things in your house then think you are very philanthropic no give things that will cost you give things that are nice and precious and good looking and bless people let us change our heart change and prepare for the big blessings to come into our life as long as our heart is like the dead sea the dead sea never flows anywhere no so it becomes like a dead sea but when you are able to flow that is you receive and you give you receive and you give you give and you receive more and when your mindset is come to that increase cast a vision and say my priority is not about my me myself it's not about consuming it all on myself it is about blessing others building your kingdom fulfill the god's desire finish the work that he has started and i want to be a part of that's why that one word i'll tell and close i want to become a part of god's team repeat with me i want to become part of god's team to fulfill god's dream god's dream father we thank you this day your heart is for your children to expand enlarge their territories increase and father help us to catch this this word that you have given in genesis to multiply to increase i pray father hallelujah is there anybody who is this morning telling god i want to be increasing i am ready to so bless me lord i want to have a increase mindset increase mindset quickly if there's anybody just stand up wherever you are if that is your prayer seriously and if that is your prayer to say lord i want to have an increase mindset ah yes increase mindset yes increase mindset increase mindset increase mindset yes catch a vision lord catch a vision lord father we just pray for these people oh put your hand in your chest and say god touch me lord give me boldness give me obedience father i pray lord that you your holy presence come and touch your people that they will become givers they will receive blessings lord i speak vehicles into their life lord people who are struggling lord lord you have ways of prospering them lord i pray for the people here that it's a small thing for you to give them a car a car is a necessity it's not a luxury anymore and i pray that you will provide them father financial flow into their life without stopping it will flow you will speak to people you will create situations in business in office surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life this favor of god is not a momentary thing but a lifelong status of a favor flow into their life father they will lack no good thing father they will lack no good thing bless them i pray bless them i pray but our heart's priority is not to consume on ourselves but we want to bless we want to bless others we want to bless the man of god the woman of god the pastor we want to bless the people who have been sowing into our life people who are speaking the word into our life lord we want to bless their ministry we want to bless the people in need father people whom we know are struggling lord father prosperous lord that we will bless lord i pray give wisdom and understanding and guidance to increase pray thank you for this blessing it is your idea it is your plan and we expand today we want to say we will not criticize people who are blessed lord my brother sister please make a commitment don't criticize people when you see they are prospering don't criticize even the non christians even the wicked you may think that is none of our business we will only be focused 
I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. We will not criticize. We will not have jealousy. We are happy to see somebody increase. Then you will start increasing. You will rejoice with those who increase. And say, God, praise God, you are doing something. And then you will say, the next is me. Hallelujah. When you see somebody getting a car and you don't have a car, Father, thank you, you're blessing them. The next is me, you're going to bless me. That is the attitude. Father, I pray, give us that focus. Bless my people, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.